these are my two uh, 120 watt solar panels that I have here. You can see how clear it is out here. I mean, they're not spraying today, so it's really clear. Gorgeous out. These things give out, you know, close to uh, seven amps each. When I first got solar panels, I was interested in the wattage. I don't even care about that anymore. All I care about is amps. I could get more amps if I probably went with an MPPT controller, but I do have an additional two solar panels that I'm going to set up as auxiliary panels that will capture that morning light and uh, evening light. Those are also 120 watts each. So those are going to be big and I have a place in the basement that I can store those. Okay, here's the first bay. This holds, this holds the house battery. This is a brand new, I, I just got it like two days ago, the old one died. Uh, this is a brand new Interstate 4D deep cycle battery. It's got about 390 amp hours. Solar panels are connected back there. Um, this thing's also grounded. This battery's also grounded to the frame as well. But I do have uh, the solar panel going directly to the negative as opposed to the frame. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. As long as there's a common ground, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, right now, we're at about 370 amp hours, I guess, on this battery. They say don't take it, you know, they recommend don't drain it past 60%. So I would say about 200 amp hours. Um, you don't want to go past on, on something like this. Um, but with 25, you know, 12 and a half amp hours an hour, 12, 12 and a half amps an hour, uh, it shouldn't be a problem. All right, let me, let me go. This is the basement that used to hold the Onan 4KW generator. In here I have four 6 volt Trojan T105 batteries wired in series and in parallel. Let's see if you can get up here. Both of them connected to, well, they're con two of them are connected to a charge controller and then the other two are connected to a 2KW inverter. Uh, I just put wood down. You see where I put the wood down. And it actually created like a little step where the old generator was. And uh, the batteries fit perfectly. I did have to modify this little strap just to kind of hold them in. Uh, I took the wire that used to actually connect electricity to the coach. Just coming through there, in through this box. I pulled all that out, wired it back to my inverter. I'll show you that in just a second. Here's the old positive lead from the 12 volt battery, house battery. Uh, I unplugged it from the 12 volt house battery so it won't hit the frame on accident. There's the old gas line. These batteries all together, they probably give me close to 460 amp hours, which is great. All right, let's go take a look at uh, the inside. Here's the brains of the charge controller. Right now it's uh, pumping in about 12 point, ah, just changed, 13.7 amps. That's on two 120 watt solar center synergy monocrystalline uh, solar panels. Let's take a look at the first battery. Okay, we're at 13.43 volts and we have 415 amp hours. That's the Trojans under here. What I did was on the top, I wired the Trojans through here into a 100 amp fuse and into the back of a, uh, what is that, Harbor Freight 2KW uh, inverter. It works great. Now this was the wire that was actually, it ran all the way down through the floor and it connected to the generator. I put a plug on it, put a kilowatt meter on there. <clears throat> what you do to turn that on, so you just flip that, no noisy generator. Great. You can run all your appliances. This thing works. Microwave. I mean, honestly, I could... Let me shut off the evaporative cooler. I could run this. Yeah. I have it on fan right now. I don't want to push it with uh, turning on the AC. But yeah, it runs. And I can hear that buzzing. That buzzing is the, uh, <clears throat> that's the charger for the 12 volt system. I gotta figure out how to disconnect that. But yeah, that's, uh, that's the wiring for my 
a 110 volt. Now, I know you guys may think, oh, what, what's he doing? This has got a water tank right here. This water tank is actually an auxiliary water tank. The main water tank is actually on the other side, under the bed. This is actually for the two 12 volt evaporative coolers that I have. And I have a little one and a half amp pump right there. Let's see if you can see it. Found that on eBay. It's wired to it and it goes up through the roof and it, uh, it gives water to the two evaporative coolers. I might do a video on that. Okay, now if we do need to shut off the solar to each battery bank, I did install these. Okay, let's go ahead and shut these off. So if I want to kill 12 volt system, it's off. If I want to kill the 110 volt system, it's off. I gotta be honest with you, it's really nice not having a uh, having power for free, not having to worry about fumes, noise, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this thing does make a slight hum, but nothing like a generator. But I'm sure once the bed is on, it won't you won't hear anything. Both uh, batteries that lead up to the charge controller, the Sunsaver Duo, which is right there. Each of them have 30 amp fuses in line. Now I ran out of red wire, so I did have to use a red wire coming from the cutoff switch, uh, black wire coming from the cutoff switch to the fuse, and then I just hooked it up red again. So that's that. Wanted to show you something real quick. Right now I'm getting uh, my first battery has 13.35 amps coming in. Or right, no, I'm sorry, it's 13.35 volts. All right, let's take a look. Second battery's at 12.63. Now take a look at this. My max on this battery is 390 amp hours. With two swamp coolers running, both of them are running, pumps and everything, I'm still pumping amps into those batteries. So I, I think solar is just, for RVs, it's an amazing, amazing thing to be able to generate power for free. I mean, you just pay for the uh, <coughs> solar panels, charge controller and batteries, and uh, you got it, you know, you got free power. There's an RV park down here uh, where I have my uh, little vacation home here and uh, there's full hookups and everything. Over here though on this side it's dry camping and I ran into a couple people while going to the RV store and almost all of them have solar panels. One guy was telling me that he has like a 1KW system on his uh, RV. He never runs the generator. He says he probably used it for three hours last year. Uh, he doesn't run the AC unit, but it's not that hot right now to where you do need to use an AC unit. <coughs> what he has are the fantastic fans, and he runs those all day long. He has uh, six, uh, six volt batteries, he was telling me. A really nice setup, really friendly guy. Now him and his wife, they full-time RV. But yeah, for I mean, for, uh, for RVs and uh, that kind of thing, I think solar panels is definitely the way to go. I mean, they keep your battery charged at all times. Say you're parking it for, you know, you don't use it for six months or something. Well, when you come back, you can plug right into it. You can plug your computer in, you know, you can plug your vacuum in, and everything will work because it keeps those batteries topped off, floated, um, you know, keeps them maintained that whole time. But to have that kind of freedom to where you can just go pretty much anywhere you want, have electricity, as long as you have enough water, you have enough food, I mean, you could, you could go dry camping for weeks on end. Uh, as long as the sun's out, you know, you'll be having electricity. <clears throat> Maybe I should add a water filtration system to this. Maybe be able to use lake water or something like that. You know, then we still got to deal with the food issue. But yeah, to have that kind of freedom, I mean, I guess that's what uh, RVN's all about.